right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Let's do this today. Let's check out how to create a uh, apply a pain effect stroke to a curve. And um, what you're seeing here is basically a curve that um, you know ha has some extrusions on it. And this is sort of hard to do um, modeling with, um, say, polygons or NURBS. Uh, because it produces like a kink. Um, sometimes your, your geometry will get kinks in it and this is just sort of an easy way to do it and um, very effective. So let's take a look at this scene real quick. Um, what I did is created a curve and then I basically applied a paint effect stroke to that curve. Now as you can see this is a, a mesh basically and it has some various properties over here in your tabs. You can see where we have a stroke shape one. Well, what I've done in this, and this is what you have to understand about this um, process, is you have to set all of these points to make it extrude along, uh, along this um, curve. So over here, you'll notice that you have pressure scale settings, and that's what we're gonna be working with today. And you can see I have a lot of little points set here. This is the small view. If I want to enlarge it, I'll just bring it up like that. And, um, you know, you can see where I have a whole bunch of different points set here, um, which correlate to um, various pieces of this geometry. So if I were to, say, select one of these, and let's see if we can see it in action. I'll bring this down. You'll notice that right up here in this portion of the scene, um, as I alter that a little bit, you can see it changing. It's probably not such a good view, but let's look at a different one. This one down here. Okay, you'll notice this area down here as I work this um, little point that I set, um, you can see it changing and you can modify things and do all sorts of crazy stuff with this uh, pressure scale. So let's create this. I'll walk you through the process and we'll try and make it brief. There's a lot to cover, so let's get going. Okay, I'm just going to minimize that for the moment and um, let's come in here and let's just uh, create a, a new scene. Okay, I'm just going to go for a new scene. I don't care if I save those. So once we're in the, our new scene, let's create a quick curve. So go ahead and press the space bar once and come down to our front view. And let's just scroll back a little bit. And I want to create a uh, CV curve. So I'm going to get my CV curve and I'll just put a whole bunch of points randomly. Just sort of click anywhere. Make yourself a curve. Okay, press on the space bar again cursor over into the perspective view spacebar and let's look at that curve. Now uh, the curve is just sort of ordinary as it is so let's whack it out a little bit. Let's come up here remember you can uh, right mouse click and go into your control vertex and let's just take some of these at random and we'll just pull those out there and just sort of maybe move that one down and let's bring this one uh, let's bring it over here and up a little bit. So anyway just get some variance in your curve and uh, yeah, now nah, let's bring these over here a little bit. Um, uh, take those and yeah, we'll bring them over there. Okay, so anyway, you get the idea. Now we've got our curve. Uh, let's do this. Let's let's look at the curve as an object. So right mouse click, go back to your object mode, and uh, there it is. Okay, now what we want to do is let's look at where this center pivot is. And let's just um, take our center pivot on the curve and let's modify it and let's just center it. So we're going to just center that center pivot. Okay, got that in, a, in order. Now this um, tutorial is straight out of the manual, um, the Cybex manual by uh, Eric Keller. This is the Mastering Maya 2009. So that's where this exercise is coming from. And it's really good to show you how to basically take a pain effect stroke and attach it to this curve. All right, so now that we have all of that, let's do this. We're going to um, choose our curve here. And what we want to do is come up into Paint Effects. Make sure you're in your rendering menu set. Come up into Paint Effects. And what we want to do is we want to come into these um, curve utilities right here. And what we want to do is attach brush to curves. So we'll go ahead and hit that. You'll notice that it gets a little bit wider um, you'll see a little bit of a mesh appear there now. So that's a good sign we're doing something right. <laughs> okay, let's look at this first and let's see what our, our Brush 2 global scale is. Right now it's set at 5. I kind of like to bring that up a little bit 
and right now it's at nine you can even click in there and set it up to say maybe 40 okay that gives me a, a little bit bigger mesh to see now you can see it has some points here where you're kind of kind of wacky don't worry about that yet um, what we want to do is I'm going to come back here a little bit and we want to um, basically come to our outliner it's important to go to your outliner for some of this stuff because we want to see what we're choosing here okay so I want to select stroke one for the moment alright so I'm going to select stroke one and what I want to do is we're going to modify that a little bit so I'm going to come up into modify and let's come down to convert and what we're going to do is we are going to convert paint effects to polygons right here so just go ahead and click on that you'll notice that it, it gives you a little bit more of a mesh here and it kind of did some stuff and it created what's called a brush mesh 2 group or brush 2 mesh group okay so let's do this first let's take our stroke 1 okay from the outliner and let's just hide it by um, on the Mac uh, yeah on the Mac it's a control H so I'm gonna hit control H and that just hid that so that's cool I, for PCM uh, whatever <laughs> figure it out <laughs> um, okay so now that we have that let's let's choose our brush mesh group right here the number two and we're gonna come over here to edit alright and what we want to do with that is we want to ungroup it basically so I'm gonna come down to my ungroup option right here and ungroup okay and basically that just disconnected it and we're ready to do some more stuff so we're gonna rename this brush to main shape right now okay and we're gonna just call that hose one so I'll call it hose one okay and we're good to go so now let's um, let's just click outside of there and you can see where we have our hose one here and it's going to be underneath this brush to main so we'll select hose one right there and let's just maybe let's see on hose one let's assign it um, a Lambert so it should have one connected to it but um, for the moment we'll just um, come over here and assign it an existing material and I'll do that Lambert one that should work for now okay so now we're halfway there all right what we want to do is we want to get back into this um, outliner and we want to select this stroke one okay and underneath here you'll see we have some other um, you know attributes to uh, mess with here we can go to our brush to we can mess around with the global scale but right now what we're interested in is we want to go to this twist section and what we want to do is we want to activate the forward twist all right and I'm gonna just come over here and see it in a solid view so when you activate the forward twist um, basically what that does is it orientates everything toward the camera um, and that's something you have to be aware of um, that it just gives you options to orientate that toward the camera so um, or orientate other things growing along that stroke but we're not really uh, concerned with that at the moment all right so let's just activate forward twist and keep it on and then um, we could uh, come down to smoothing okay that's going to be um, under we want to set the smoothing to 10 so let's look at our brush profile our brush width oh another thing is you can take your brush width up or down from here as well so you can alter the the scale of things on there as well so anyway just something to be aware of um, yeah so for the most part that's what we want right now um, smoothing um, usually you can set smoothing to 10 and smoothing is uh, under your stroke shape one so smoothing will basically just smooth that mesh out a little bit and give you a little bit better um, contouring around your twisty points basically so all right there we go now what we're interested in is coming down here and looking at that pressure scale okay because we don't have anything applied to it yet so I'm gonna minimize the outliner here for a second we'll go back to this and let's come in here to our pressure scale and you know you'll notice that there's a little box like this you might want to click on this arrow 
and get sort of a larger representation of it there. Okay, and you'll notice that there's one point up here in the in the top. So that's where is sort of a starting point. So let's just mess around with these. Um, oh, but first, before we do anything, let's come over here and what we want to do is we want to set this instead of a tube width for the pressure map one we don't really want tube width right now what we're interested in is just width okay there's two distinctions there but right now let's just go with tube width not I mean width and that tube width okay so we'll switch that up like that okay now we're ready to kind of edit these points so let's just at random let's click on some of these in here and set some points just to to start playing with and you'll get the concept pretty quick when you you start messing with this so i'll just set some points now what i want to do is for the moment i'm going to turn this from linear to none okay and that'll just give us a real straight extrusion um, but you basically have to set all of these points and let's see if we can sometimes you can see what's happening as you move these see what's happening as I as I move these points down right now since it's set to linear it's just basically giving it a drop-off um, it's sort of creating an intestine like uh, organic uh, twist so anyway that's kind of what you want to be aware of there now if it's set to none like it is now you'll notice that these turn into more hardened edges. So like, let's say for example, I start here and set this one to none. All right, and I come over here, or actually let's do this one and switch them all from linear to none. Okay, uh, we'll switch that one from linear to none. And let's do that one from linear to none. And we'll take this one to none. Okay, so now we have some points here. I'm going to put a point right here by clicking, and I'm just going to switch that linear to none, and we'll move this one out and kind of look at it on the graph. Okay, now you can see where there's going to be some various things happening. I'm going to um, alter this one a little bit, and you'll see where um, you know it, it, it takes on that shape. Um, let's get a full usually you want to set if you're doing just tube like extrusions um, that are basically hard edged you'll want all of these set to none alright so you just basically click on them and set them to none and let's do that one that one's at none let's set this one to none and you can see where it, it alters the shape on the graph a little bit too to give you a representation of what it should look like so now that we have those set um, let's uh, let's play with them um, you'll you'll see where on on the uh, viewport here uh, let's see I'll play around with these you can kind of see what it does um, this one is set to linear so let's set this back to none but you get the idea um, that's how you start doing these these various extrusions and this is how you control them so it's real fun to play around with. Um, there's lots of different variations you can do. Uh, you, you can set these down as many points as you want. And you'll notice things happening as you start um, adding more points and making more edits. Uh, let's bring that down a little bit. This is how you do it. So let's bring that down. Okay, so essentially I hope you get the idea. That's how you work with this and that's how you create quick extrusions. Now I'm going to do more tutorials in the future uh, which sort of explain this a little better but essentially that's what you want to be looking at um, is just this process of how to extrude on this tube. So uh, I hope that's clear. I know it's kind of convoluted <laughs> but that is Maya sometimes. So anyway, uh, there it is way to whack things out. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and um, as always, read a book, and um, have a great day.